I aim to motivate and inspire viewers to enjoy the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the slow wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello. Welcome to episode 46 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In this episode, I have a very short, brief update on my knitting for you. And after that is a layer cake section that introduces the collaboration that I am doing with Hayley Trezise from Raggedy Rags making obi belts. Her obi belts are fantastic. She makes them normally out of tweed fabrics and I approached her to ask if she would do a special series of obi belts for layer cake using layer cake linens and she said yes. The obi belts will be available on the, sh the Slow Wardrobe website. There are different color combinations and um, I'll talk in more detail about that in the next section. But before that, let's have a quick look at what I've been knitting. Well, as promised, I'm going to keep this section relatively short because I only have two projects to show you. One finished one, the jumper that I was knitting for my husband. I've already shown a photograph of him wearing it on Instagram. I'll put the photograph here for you as well so you can see him <laughs> with a proud smirk on his face. He really likes it. And I've nipped it with me to the studio to show it here on the um, mannequin that I was using before. Uh, like I said, I've made some modifications to the pattern in the sense that I did not think I would have enough of this main color. I only had four hanks of that and it's a DK yarn. I'll list the yarns again as we go once more last time. Um, so I uh, brought in two other colors. First of all, I used a variegated yarn. I think the original uh, uh, samples of this pattern, which is called High Lonesome by Caitlin of Boyland Networks. She uses a variegated yarn. I think it may be a graduated colorway for the samples. I used a variegated yarn that I had two hanks of that I really, really liked and wanted to use. I think as it happens, I've only used one of the two, so I've got some more left. And I wanted to keep the balance of the pattern by um, adding some of that variegated yarn in the stripes that I've added to the main body. I did not like the idea. I'd done a little bit of swatching in advance and I did not like the idea of just bringing in the light color for that midsection. I did not think I would have enough of the variegated yarn, sorry, itchy nose, wool in my nose. Um, I did not think I would have enough of the um, variegated yarn to do the color work and then do stripes of the body. So I brought in a third color, which was the same yarn base as the variegated for the stripes. And I think it has lightened the whole jumper in and, and given it some interest in a way that really works. And then I decided to bring the variegated yarn back again in the cuffs uh, at the bottom of the sleeves and the jumper by doing corrugated rib. I'll show an up close of that as well. It's a two by two rib where the uh, knit stitches are in the main color and the purl stitches are in the uh, variegated yarn. So I really like the balance that it's given me in terms of color. So thumbs up, he loves it. So yay, on to the next project. And I haven't quite decided what that project is going to be yet. I will be um, knitting another design by uh, Jackie Bog soon. I'm waiting for a kit from her. It's going to be the October jumper and I will talk about that in more detail once I have the yarn and I can show you a good photograph of the pattern. In the meantime though, I've got a pair of socks on the needles. That's all that I've been working on and not even that much as you can see. 
my knitting mojo for socks is really low at the moment. I love the yarn, but I still have color work on the brain. I don't know what that is about, but the simpleness of a sock, which I normally find really meditative and I really enjoy, it's not doing it for me at the moment. So every evening I pick it up and I do knit a little bit, but my heart isn't really in it. And you can see that in the lack of progress. In terms of yarns, I will, uh, this is a, a sock blank. I will list the details below. These are going to be socks for my husband. And he is really looking forward to them. He loves the effect of the, of the yarn. I'll show you the sock blank as well. So there's quite a lot of blank in the sock blank. And it's just got these splodges, which end up of, of lovely colors, which just end up coming up like tiny little specks in the sock, which I really, I really like. And he does as well. So that's all I'm knitting at the moment. Now, there were a couple of projects that really took my fancy recently. Um, there was this uh, color work uh, shawl that has really been doing the rounds on Instagram was incredibly uh, popular, was bought and kind of queued by lots and lots of people. And I saw some of the knitted versions that are the colorways, different colorways of finished ones online that I really liked. So I was rather keen to um, knit one of those. I'm showing you pictures as we go here because of course I've forgotten the name of it. Haven't really pre prepared for this section at all, as you can see, apart from having my samples ready. But then there's also this other color work shawl that I saw last year at some point. I'll show you a picture of that as well and show the name. It's just done in two colors of yarn. And I'm thinking at the moment of doing that main mustard color in a woolly yarn and then doing the little flowers, the little, they look almost like, especially in that ethereal pink color, they look like a cherry blossom almost. And I'm thinking of doing that in linen. And I'm, so I'm doing a, going to do a little swatch of that color combination together, but most importantly, that yarn combination. So what I'm thinking of using is either my own soliloquy yarn, which is 600 meters per 100 grams, identical to my linen. Now, because of the, the texture of linen, it, the, if you go for the same weight, the same, same running length, then the diameter of the yarn is slightly thinner because linen is more dense. But I've worked with the two yarns together before and it worked really well. So I think that might be an option for it. And of course, the entire shawl will shrink down in size because the original is a DK yarn knitted on four millimeter needles. And I'll be knitting probably on three millimeter needles, three and a quarter if I can get away with it, but that may make my fabric too loose, especially on the linen section. So I'm gonna have to experiment a little bit with that. So that's my other possibility. And um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do yet because I'm also rather keen once that kit from Jackie comes in to start on the October jumper. So, <laughs> I'm in a, a bit of a quandary. I think I'm, what I'm going to do is do that um, that test swatch of uh, a linen and a woolly fabric. Oh, like I said, either my soliloquy yarn or maybe I'll use a biche et bouche le petit lamb's wool, which I'm still besotted with. And I really like the idea of the contrast of the very smooth, slick linen and the slight crunch that the petit lamb's wool has and i have some of that in a mustardy goldy color at home so i don't know whether i've got enough and all of that so watch this space in uh, my instagram feed i'll start showing you what i'm producing and i'm sure i'll have an update in two weeks time as to what it's become and, and what i'm working on 
So that's it for knitting this week. And um, let's have a look at these obi belts because it's not just about obi belts in the sense of looking at those specifically, but to look at how you can use a belt like an obi belt to really change the silhouette that a layer cake creates on your body when you just put it on without making any changes. So there are body shapes that really benefit from emphasizing their waistline when they're wearing layer cake. And most layer cakes just hang without being uh, cinched in or being pulled in anywhere. So I am coming up with ideas of how you can wear an OB belt in a way that it changes the silhouette of your layer cake and still really flatters your shape and emphasizes the shape of the layer cake in a way that you like, I hope. Let me know what you think. It's really sunny in Grayshaw today. I think it's gonna be the last day of warmth. The thunderstorms are all going to descend on us. So we've been told in the next day or so. And uh, Andrea's got the day off, clever girl, beautiful weather. So I'm taking the opportunity to film this today on Wednesday, the 16th of June with the sun shining and no machines in the background. Andrea always has to stay away from the studio when I'm filming the layer cake section so that the sounds from the sewing machine don't end up playing into the sound of me trying to rub it onto you. So it's nice and quiet in here and I've got sun on the brain, of course, with this gorgeous weather. So I thought after putting some teaser pictures out on Instagram about the Obi Belts, which is a fantastic collaboration that I'm doing with Hayley Trezies from uh, Raggedy Rags. You know how much I love her work and I love her art. And she makes Obi Belts mostly, I think, out of wool. And it occurred to me that especially for people who are struggling with the standard um, silhouette that you get with layer cakes when you just let them hang off you, the Obi belt can give a wonderful extra new silhouette by literally just tying it around your waist or your rib cage, which is one of the things that I'm going to show you to change the silhouette and to give more definition to your shape. And that may just be something that you like to do anyway, but I discovered that those OB belts are a fantastic combination in conjunction with the layer cake garment. So I asked Haley whether she would be interested in doing a collab with me. We always send our offcuts of linen to her to create her wonderful um, art to wear pieces out of. But in this case, it's a combination of some offcuts and bigger pieces of fabric so we can make these belts. I'm gonna grab one that she did as a sample. They, they are two and a half meters long got her little logo hanging off it and they are made out of different colors on different sides and she does her little scribble stitches in places to adorn them with and one side is always going to be more plain and the other side is going to be a bit more decorated so you end up with two different belts in one when you get one and when you put them around yourself, they're, first of all, they're going to be available on the website, on the Slow Wardrobe website. When you put one and in different colors, when you put one on, I'll show it with, this is um, my own um, 
uh, long size one play suit and I'm just wearing it uh, I've got black underwear on it's partially to show you that when I put some of the summer dresses on you can see how little see-through the linens are even the lighter colors in the summery fabrics but I'll show you that in a minute running and racing ahead as usual so with the size one play suit you can see that I've got I've, I'm wearing a black bralette underneath my play suit I love wearing bralettes um, and um, if you find that a bralette by itself doesn't give you enough support then actually consider wearing a combination of the bras that you normally wear with a bralette over the top you can get bralettes that just give you coverage rather than support so it's an interesting alternative to a singlet or a vest top if it's too warm to wear a vest top underneath and you just want less then consider wearing a bralette over your bra anyway i may be <laughs> teaching you how to suck eggs but just in case it's a useful suggestion so you take one of these and your natural inclination might be to put it around your waist, right? So I'll show you in a case of my shape what that does and where it does and doesn't work. So I'm putting it around my waist and I'm putting it like fitted but not too tight. So I'm not really pulling myself in too much just fit it around my waist without holding in my tummy or anything like that just letting it hang <laughs> this is how it looks okay so from the side i really have a belly underneath my waist and by wearing this the way i'm doing now i'm putting the emphasis just above it on my waist and then you can see my belly stick out underneath the obi belt. The other thing that doesn't work for me in this particular scenario is if I turn a little bit like that, my hips are at their biggest just below my waistline. So by putting this on my waist and pulling it in, yes, it emphasizes my waist, but it also emphasizes those sticky out fat hips. And I don't want to put the emphasis there. And it's not that because I'm ashamed of it, but I don't want to emphasize those parts of me. So what do I do? And this is something that you can play around with depending on what, how your body is shaped, where and how your boobs sit in relation to everything everywhere else and play with an obi belt or a scarf. Although I must say, this shape with having the wideness in front and then tapering down the side my goodness it makes it easy like you like you saw and i've tried i've tried to show you this this whole mechanism and how you can cinch yourself in in different places for singeing the clothes rather and nothing works as quick and easy as one of these i must say so the way i wear this and the way works best for me and like i say you have to try that because Horses for courses, different shapes, different silhouettes. I put this literally just below my bra line. So just under my boobs. So it's actually on my rib cage. Now I go to the back and cross over and come back to the front. I tie the, the knots, of course, with the other thing you can do here is uh, turn them in the back so you come back with the contrasting color if you want to play off the fact that you've got those two contrasting colors then you can turn them and they'll stay in place because it goes so wide here so you come back to the front if you like the idea of really securing it then of course you can put a double knot in so it won't slip at all but i must say it doesn't slip very easily so if I adjust this a little bit, looking in the mirror, and all I'm adjusting is I'm putting this a little bit more in the middle of the belt. So now it is sitting at the bottom of my bra line. I'm keeping it high here in the back, so it's really going around the bottom part of my rib gauge 
and back to the front. Now what happens? My belly is still there and it's still sitting there, but I'm not cinching things in right above it. So it doesn't create that sticky out effect of showing off that belly fat. Same in the back. I'm cinching in here. So the play suit just skims over my hips instead of bulging out. So then you get that tulipy kind of shape and it emphasizes where I want it emphasized. See that? Now, of course, you can play a little bit with how these, where the fabric goes and, and whatever. You saw I didn't really adjust much. I literally just went around and back to the front. So you can play with this, but you get a really good idea of what happens and how good that looks. Of course, what does what also happens is that the play suit gets a little bit shorter. Did you see that? Because, of course, I'm pulling it in and pulling it taut here to my body. So that creates a lovely shape, a lovely silhouette. And it doesn't bother me in any way when it comes to sitting down. You should feel that if you've got something pulled around the bottom of your rib cage, when you sit down, it doesn't fold because your body folds lower than that. You can literally just relax your stomach and how, no matter how your stomach and your bum move when you sit down, this stays comfortable and this stays in place because it's not affected by it because your rib cage doesn't move that much. It goes in and out a little bit with your breathing, but there's enough space for that. Apart from that, it doesn't really shift much. It's just that, you know, solid cage. So I can recommend that as a setup. This also works really well when you're a little bit longer in the torso and have relatively shorter legs. By putting the emphasis high, of course, you put the emphasis more on your bust. And some people, when they have a large bust, they like that effect. But you can create more of an emphasis on your bust when it's smaller on the small side as well. Again, depending on what you prefer. But in terms of the proportions of your body parts, of course, it looks like the top is shorter and the bottom is longer. So for those of you who are not happy with the length of their legs, by doing this, you create the effect of a longer leg. You can really see that with this um, dolly as well, with the, with the play suit, how you create a short torso and a really long, nice elongated and curvy bottom. So I hope that makes sense. What I'm going to do now is show the same effect of one of these belts on some of the other layer cakes, because it's not just play suits that you can do that with. And I'll start with the dresses. Summertime, right? Back in a moment. Oh dear, consummate professional that I am. Well, I forgot to turn on the light for the first section. So I apologize that that was a little bit darker, but here I am. And now it actually looks sunny in the picture as well. I think the uh, phone does a decent job of um, kind of addressing the color balance. But if it does look a bit more sunny in the picture now, it's because I've actually turned on my light. Okay, so wearing the wave dress in the illustrious color of Fitonia. Yes, I finally memorized that name so I can remember it now. And I want to show you that with this silhouette of this rounded line, which comes from our smocks and what used to be our mini smocks, you can do exactly the same thing with one of these belts and not worry about these lines, the fact that those lines are there doesn't mean that you cannot change the silhouette and belt it. So in order to create the um, emphasis of, of the contrast of color, I'll go with the black side. Oh, well, you know what? Just go with the gray side out, why not? I'm doing the same thing, putting it right below my bust line, going around, my rib cage, not paying any attention particularly to what happens with the fabric. 
I'll have a look at that in a mirror in a minute and adjust it if necessary. But you often find that you don't have to. Tie a double knot in the front. And let's go see the damage. So what do we see here? First of all, the pockets are just below the belt. Man, as if we planned it like that. We didn't, but that's how it comes out. And in the back, see, I don't really have to adjust any of the fabric. And what it does is it gives this dress a little bit of a 50s feel because of that wide, wide, wide circle skirt. And by pulling in this middle section, it really puts the emphasis on the circle skirt. You see that? Can't help myself, got a twirl in this dress. And of course, it shortens it again as well. You can actually see with my, with my bralette that, you know, it makes my boobs look a little bit hangy. Could do with wearing a bralette that's a little bit tighter. Didn't pay any attention of that to that today. But if I pull this down a bit, I have the tendency to kind of pull up my shoulders when I'm putting the belt on and it's not actually really necessary. If I just pull the dress down a little bit, so I've got a little bit less extra fabric sitting here. This looks better, see? So that's the kind of adjustments that you can make. And then again, because this sits around your rib cage, it doesn't move anymore, it just stays still. So all of this stays in place and it's really comfortable. And then bum, belly, hips are all nicely skimmed over and sit nicely underneath the twirly skirt. What do we think? Let me know. So let's move on to the next dress. The tulip dress, of course. You've seen this now on the wave dress. Let's tie it, try a tulip. Maybe I'll also swap the belt so you see a different color rather than just the, the gray and black. I'll grab the colorful one. Colorful, right? Here we go. Well, the other thing that I've done is I've put the uh, steel obi belt that I was playing with, the steel and black one, around her here with that steel play suit. So to show you that you don't have to go for contrast at all, you can create that new silhouette by going for a belt in the same color. So that's something to keep in mind as well and fun to play with. So not pulling my shoulders up too high, need to get out of that habit. Pull this around me. Not really adjusting anything other than trying to hold these two flaps flat. There we go. How does that look? Yeah, I really like it. I hope you do too. Same thing happens again. You create a nice tulipy shape that naturally goes with the colors and the shape with the colors that naturally goes with the shape of the layer cakes. Pockets easily accessible, dress becomes ever so slightly shorter, but not a lot. And cinching in, in a nice way, all around. The next thing I'll show you is, I'll show, show you a shorter dress, but I'll also show you a larger dress. What if some of your layer cakes are too big? Can you then adjust them by wearing one of these? Let's check. Okay, so here is a size two dress in the shorter length. Look, see how much lower the armhole is, for example, because it's the bigger size. So if I'm happy to walk around like this at home and just like really nice and relaxed, but I'm thinking, no, it's kind of lost its edge a little bit because it is so much bigger on me because I've lost weight or whatever, then one of these may come in handy. I'll put the gray side on the outside, do the same thing again. Here you can see uh, with my black underwear that despite 
the fact that I'm wearing black underneath, you can only see the faintest hint of that through the fabric. It's because our fabric is a decent tight weave. This is the summer weight and you can still see it is not the horrible see-through that you get with the cheaper linens that are out on the market. Okay, so the shorter dress, oh, see how it's kind of that extra space in the back. Of course, I can then adjust that by pulling that a little bit taller, pulling that through. Is it working? bit more in the middle. So I've got more fabric to play with, but again, once I have put that kind of in place with the belt around it, because that belt is around my rib cage, it'll stay in place. And now I've got that freedom of movement again. It won't fold over if I Put it low enough see that it was starting to fall fold over because it's a little bit too close to my boob there we are it, they won't it won't fold over it'll stay flat and even the bottom of it only it's still above my belly button so that won't fold either when i sit down the whole thing doesn't really crunch where it is okay i think i've explained this a number of times now so sorry if i'm starting to bore <laughs> So a bigger dress, it's also possible to cinch that in with the belt. Let me add um, a smock and I'll do it with a tabard as well so that you can see what happens with a smock or a tabard with this around. Same effect again. I'll keep the dress on, the size two dress, and I'll put a size one smock over the top. Okay, I've gone for colorful again. But this is a size one smock over a size two dress with an obi belt to cinch both of them in. Make sure that my facing is tucked in. There we are. What do you think? Looking good? I think so. And really comfortable, like I said before. Um, let me show you exactly the same look with a tabard. Like this. There we go. Staying with the bright colors. Violet instead of purple. And a tabard instead of a smock. Just to show you that with an A-line top like the tabard, it's just as effective to wear one of the OB belts high up. And like I said, maybe lower down works better for you. But the main thing here is that you can alter the silhouette of your layer cakes. And that these OB belts work extremely well. Of course, you can do it the other way around as well. I could wear the wider part of the OB belt in the back. So... You can play around with it, you get the gist. And instead of just doing dresses, of course, I could wear a tabard with um, a pair of trousers, for example. Um, I wonder even, would this work? Even with the mini tabard being so short? Shall I have a quick go just before the end? Mini tabard, pair of trousers and an obi belt, just to see if it works. I haven't gone there yet, so let's go. Okay, well, <laughs> this is different. I wasn't <laughs> expecting this at all. I hadn't thought it through. The, of course, the mini tabard, when you cinch that in around your ribs, of course it goes all peplumy and frilly. And when worn with a pair of baggies, I couldn't get to the other trousers because I've blocked them with a rail of clothes to create enough space to film here. So I could just about reach the herringbone baggie. So I've grabbed the first one I could get hold of. Then when I put the belt around, I thought, oh, actually, that 
colors quite nicely with the multi-check of the belt. <laughs> I, li I really like it, but note, because I'm wearing this high, I then have to pull up the baggies high because if I wear the baggies on my waist, I have a gap. See that? You know, if here's my waist, I've got the Obi belt high, so I need to pull the baggies up to the bottom of the belt. Not a problem in my case, because my belly will keep it in place. But it shortens my baggies a little bit because I wear them high-waisted like this. But again, everything kind of stays in place. You can move and shake because it's all secured by a rib cage. So if I wouldn't want to wear, run any risks with the gap between my baggies and my um, mini tab, um, I would wear a, a play suit, of course, because the play suit will keep going. So whatever happens with the little peplum of the mini tab is fine. OK, so enough about wearing Obi belts with your layer cakes. Um, partially to introduce them. You'll be able to find them on the website and partially to play around with the proportions of the layer cakes and show you how you can change their silhouette by playing with singeing equipment like an Obi belt. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon.